JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January the 20th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed on Wednesday and uh, during the Asian session Thursday against uh, the other major currencies. It lost ground uh, versus uh, the Aussie, the Euro and the British Pound, while it decked out gains against the Kiwi and the Japanese Yen. The greenback traded nearly unchanged against the Swiss franc and the Canadian dollar. Now, the weakening of the Yen combined combined with the strengthening of the Aussie suggests that markets may have traded in a risk-on fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, the weakening of the Kiwi points otherwise. Therefore, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here we see that uh, European equity indices traded mixed, but Wall Street continued to tumble on expectations that the Fed may eventually need to tighten uh, its policy faster than, um, than previously thought. That said, market appetite imp improved during the Asian session today, perhaps after China cut its uh, mortgage reference rate for the first time in nearly two years, a move that followed a surprise cut to the rate for one-year medium-term loans on Monday. Now, although the improvement in market sentiment during the Asian session may have been one of the reasons uh, behind uh, the recovery in the Aussie, we believe that the main one was the outcome of the, of, uh, the Australian unemployment report for, um, for December. The unemployment rate declined to 4.2% from 4.6%, uh, beating estimates of a downtick to 4.5%, while the net change in employment showed that the economy gained less jobs than in November, but more than the forecast suggested. This may have allowed market participants to, man to maintain bets over uh, several rate hikes by the RBA this year, despite the bank signaling that it will not hit the lift off bat button in 2022. We believe that the Aussie could stay supported for a, for a while more, at least against currencies, the central bank of which are expected, the central banks of which are expected uh, to proceed with, uh, with a more cautious uh, strat strategy than the one investors anticipate for the RBA. One example may be the Euro and the ECB. Having said all that though, it is worth mentioning that the survey for the employment report was conducted before the outbreak of the Omicron variant, the Omicron coronavirus variant, and thus there is a chance of getting weaker numbers in, um, in January. Now, with that in mind, uh, weaker numbers for January. So, with that in mind, we are reluctant to call for a long-lasting uh, recovery in the Aussie, even against uh, the Euro. Now, in contrast with uh, the Aussie, the Kiwi was the main loser among the majors, despite the improvement in market sentiment during the Asian session and despite the RBNZ hiking rates twice already. The reason may have been remarks by New Zealand Prime Minister Ardern, who said that uh, restrictions will be tightened if there is community transmission of the Omicron coronavirus strain. In our view, Kiwi traders may have thought that, that this could slow down future rate hikes by the RBNZ, especially if the bank has done so twice before any other of, uh, before any other of uh, the major central banks has ever done it uh, for the first time. 
Bank of England hiked the interest rates in December, but this was after the RBNZ's second increase, which happened in, uh, in November. Now, elsewhere, the Canadian dollar was found nearly unchanged against its US counterpart, but that doesn't change our view, especially after the acceleration in the Canadian CPIs yesterday. Both the headline and core rates bid estimates, which adds credence to the view that the Bank of Canada could also increase interest rates at its upcoming gathering. We still believe that the expectations on that front, combined with rising oil prices, could keep the loonie supported for a while more. Now, as for today's events, during the European session, we get Eurozone's final CPIs for December, which are expected to confirm their, their preliminary estimates, as well as the minutes from the latest ECB gathering. At that meeting, the ECB announced that it will end the pandemic emergency purchase program uh, in March. However, they decided to extend their, their investment horizon of the program and also to compensate by doubling the monthly pace of the asset purchase program for the second quarter. In our view, this revealed willingness to stay accommodative for a while longer, and we expect the minutes to confirm just that. That said, we don't expect a major tumble in the, in the euro solely due to the minutes. After all, ECB President Christine Lagarde said several times that they are unlikely to hit the hike button this year, while uh, with uh, ECB Chief Economist Philip Lane hinting that this may be the case by saying that they don't see inflation above uh, 2% in, in the medium term. Thus, although inflation accelerated to 5% in December, we believe that if the minutes confirm the view of no hikes this year, it will not come as a surprise. From the US, we get the existing home sales for December and the Energy Information Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are, interest, who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT just fair and direct.